All right, welcome back to Hoop Hierarchy. This is KC, and today we're going to be starting the first video in a video series that I plan on doing about former NBA, NBA MVPs and how they would adapt to the modern game if they played today. Um, I'm basing this off of their play style, um, kind of like the changes of rules, offenses, defenses, things like that. Um, and not, I'm not talking about if you just took, took the player, um, picked them up, and put them in the 2020s because I don't think that's a fair way to kind of address their skill set and how good they actually were. I don't think that's fair um, because I think a lot of these guys were very talented, but they didn't have a lot of the different modern style because the rules were different back then. But a lot of them had a game that, if you'd be surprised, a lot of them had a game that would fit really well with the modern day, I think, if they were born today. Um, so yeah, that's what I wanted to address. And so today I'm going to be talking about uh, 1959 MVPs uh, to 1970. Um, and also, I wanted to point out that this is not arguments to how good the player actually was, but how well their play style fits in the league. Uh, so for example, um, in this video we're going to talk a little bit about both Bob Cousy and Bill Russell. Um no one's going to argue that Bob Cousy was the greater of the two players, but I personally think that Bob Cousy had a game that was more before its time, while Russell had a game that worked really well back then, uh, but is unlikely to be as effective if he played in today's game. Uh, and so, yeah, like I said, it's not on how good the actual player was, but how good their game would translate to the modern league. Um and so there's going to be four tiers here. S is they would be even better today. Um, a would be just as good, if not slightly better. B would be slightly worse today. And then C would be still good, but not near the level that they were. Probably not an MVP type player if they played in the modern league with the same skill set that they had back then. Uh, so let's get right into that. <clears throat> right into that with the first MVP, Bob Pettit. So... I'm sure many people would assume that Bob Pettit would not translate well at all, being the first MVP ever in a league that was not nearly developed. But Bob Pettit was something else, for those who are not aware. Uh, look at the man's career stats, season by season. I mean, my goodness, he was just a dominant force. You know, Probably the most dominant force until Wilt came along. Uh, he averaged 26 and 16 for his career, which is just unbelievable. He had the full package when usually forwards and centers were pretty one-dimensional at the time. Uh, yes, certain things like the hook shot he had would probably not be used as often now, um, and he probably wouldn't have never he would have ne probably never developed that as much today. Um, but things such as his high-level shooting, uh, which he was a very good shooter for a big, um, would be I think would be a much improved shot. And I think he certainly would be an elite stretch big in the modern day. Um, he would also be considered a great. He was also considered a great defender by his peers back then. Uh, for example, Wilt Chamberlain said that um, Bob Pettit always guarded him extremely tough. One of the better defenders he came up against. Um, Pettit was a strong 245 and 610 with shoes. He was certainly not undersized either, um, obviously. So I, I genuinely think that Pettit would put up really good numbers today. Um, I don't think his numbers would be as good as they were back then. Um, but I think, I think his modern comparison would be would be kind of like a prime Kevin Love with better defend, better defending, but or maybe like a less athletic but more skilled Anthony Davis type of player without the injuries. Um, I've bounced back and forth between putting him in A or B because, like I said, I don't think his stats would be quite as good. Uh, but I do think he would be a major difference maker, one of the best power forwards in the league today with what he likely would have elite stretch ability and dominant game inside on both ends. Um, I don't know if he's an MVP level guy growing up in the modern day, but I do think he's elite and still really, really good. Uh, and probably in that conversation. So I'm going to put Bob Pettit in the A tier. So next up, Bob Cousy. So, like I touched a little bit on in the intro, Kuzi had a game that was before his time. Like, we'll see with at least one other player that I'm going to address, probably in a, in a future video, part of the series. Um, game plans were really rigid in the early days of, of basketball, and coaches didn't like the way that Kuzi played. Um, 
his head coach in college knew he was good, but didn't like his flashiness and showboat style of play. So he intentionally played him less minutes due to that. Um, he ended up being so good, however, that the fan base at his college basically gave his choice and his coach no choice but to put him on the floor. Um, and then when he reached the NBA, that same style of play was considered revolutionary. Um, when you consider all the ways that the rules of the game have changed since he was in the league, if you ever look up some of his highlight tapes, it's pretty amazing how well they've aged. Um, especially when you look at some of the rules that were in place that kind of were detrimental to doing flashy plays back then. Like, for example, it was so much easier to like be called for a carry or a travel, double dribble, things like that that, that players do all the time now um, that Bob Cousy was not allowed to do. And he still pulled off very impressive flashy passes. Shots were impressive. Um, you know, sometimes when you watch tape of old players, you, you think, ah, oh, this guy wasn't anything special. But watching Kuzi, you can tell that there's numerous plays where he'd just make a move that would still be considered impressive to this day. Um, Kuzi was also considered to have a really good shooting range as well, uh, even at a time where without a three-point line. Uh, in my opinion, that would translate really well to today. Um, I see him having some Chris Paul, Steve Nash, maybe a little bit of Trey Young hybrid to his game. Maybe not as good of a shooter as that. Um, uh, because, like, like I said, he, he would probably be just as flashy as a Trey Young. Those guys, maybe even a little bit flashier, but probably less efficient, as he was somewhat of a volume shooter. Uh, he didn't always hit the highest percentage of shots, but he he could make some difficult shots. Um, with that being said, he was basically a twenty and ten guy throughout his prime. I could definitely see that being the same if he grew up today. So, with that being said, I'm putting Kuzi in the A tier. So, next up, Bill Russell. So, cl Bill Russell. Clearly one of the best players to ever play the game. He had a game that, unfortunately, I would say is a bit dated as far as superstars go. Uh, it's really hard to analyze how I think he would do in the modern NBA without sounding disrespectful to how good he was, because he truly was very, very good. Um, and I think some things would translate. You know, I think he was strong and athletic. He had a a pretty decent skill set, and he was one of the better rebounders of all time. Uh, I do think he would likely be the best rebounder in the NBA if he grew up in this era. Uh, he just wasn't offensively much to write home about during his career, uh, and because of that, he wouldn't li be likely to get the kind of touches that it would take to be a superstar in the modern NBA. Uh, something that this list doesn't really consider, that it is possible that growing up today, Russell gets a more refined offensive game, but I'm basing this off of the play style a player did have, and with those parameters, I can't just say Bill Russell would learn how to knock down threes in an elite clip or something, because he really didn't do any of that in his day. Um, I do think he'd be able to run the break really well. Uh, he showed flashes of ball handling ability uh, here or there and getting out on the fast break. Uh, I think if I were to come up with a comparison, it would be really hard to do because there really isn't a guy in the league uh, who I think would lead the league in rebounds and blocks and be arguably the best defender in the NBA while also being pretty quick. Um, I'm going to say maybe kind of like a primer to go bear with, with quite a bit less size but more quickness. Um, he'd be a defensive force. You know, He'd be an absolute major piece to any championship roster and could easily boost any contender. Kind of like what he did. You know, He was a major key in those the Celtics team's winning championships. And I think putting him on any modern team... Um, would definitely help and with his modern skill set that he developed. I think he'd still be a type of guy to elevate a team to be a true winning franchise. Um, but I think based on the way the league is built, he'd probably make some all-star games based on his impact, kind of like what Draymond Green does, uh, but probably not for st statistical performances. And so he probably wouldn't win an MVP in the modern day. Um, for that reason, Bill Russell's going to go in the C tier. Like I said, it's unfortunate because Bill Russell, he was truly great in his time. It's just his game doesn't really translate like that. So next up, I'm going to talk a little bit about Wilt Chamberlain. So I think some parts of Wilt's game would fit mo better in the modern day, for example. And I think a lot of it wouldn't. Um, I do think he would translate a bit better than Bill Russell. Uh, for example, Wilt was a very mobile big in his younger days, uh, winning multiple track championships in high school. He was considered very fast, very athletic. Uh, his athleticism was off the charts. I mean, it's hard to say 
what was simply a tall tale and what was factual. Um, his vertical being a reported 48 inches, for example, I mean, that's just kind of, uh, kind of absurd, to, absurd to think about. But, I mean, it's possible. You know, the tape does back up the fact that he was absolutely one of the most athletic people to ever play the game at the center position. Uh, so while I do think that the athleticism would translate really well, I also think that a lot of Wilt's game is a bit dated. Um, like a lot of the bigs at the time, he was primarily a back-to-the-basket big, which, of course, was really the prevailing style all throughout time until the 2010s when it came to big men. Uh, I think the modern day, instead of refining that back to the basket game, I can envision he would grow up and develop a li- little bit more of his ball handling skills that he showed flashes of, um, which he which he had a bit of, but didn't use all that much. Uh, you know, there is film from him in high school, for example, uh, getting out of the fast break and running it pretty effectively. So I could definitely foresee a situation where. Um, if the back to the basket game didn't have as much use like it does today, deciding to focus on that skill set and said, you know, he had more of a, a, a jumper that he would use occasionally. Like he had a, a post fade that he would use, but it wasn't a primary option for him in his days. Um, like I said, he would use that post fade, but his, his repertoire w- moves kind of were with that post fade. And then he had a hook and then he also had like a finger roll type thing. Um, you know, I'm personally very high on Will as a player, um, but I believe it to be kind of delusional to assume that he would be able to average 50 points and 20-something rebounds in a season in the modern NBA. I think that's just not even within the realm of possibility. Um, but I do think, if I were to make a modern comparison, I think he would have a lot of Giannis to his game. You know, kind of really works the inside, but his athleticism and he, his quickness, things along those lines, I, I think he would have that type of game to him if he grew up in the modern day. Um, regardless of that, I, I think it's... I, because I see it unlikely that he would that he would continue to have some of those statistical performances that he did, he would have some statistical regression if he played today. Um, but I still think he'd be complete force. I'm going to place him in the B tier. I think he'd be slightly worse in the modern day. But I think I still think he'd be very good, and I still think he'd be in the MVP conversation. So, next up, Oscar Robertson. So, Oscar Robertson was absolutely built for the modern game. Um, he, you know, he was the first player to ever average a triple-double in a season. He was the only one to do it until Russell Westbrook a couple years ago. And now, now that we have new, numerous players approaching being able to do that now, like Jokic, Luka, guys like that, um, the guy having the ball in his hands these days... Uh, is a more do-it-all type of player than they were in the past. And Oscar was about 50 years before his time when it came to that, making it, this feat all the more impressive. Um, he he really did it all. You know, he, he was possibly the most versatile player in history. He was an oversized guard at the time. Most point guards were not very tall. Uh, he was a great shooter. He wasn't the most athletic, but he wasn't unathletic either. He was very smart on the court. He was an elite passer. You know, it can go on and on. You know, truly one of the most well-rounded players at the, to play at the time. It, it, like, and probably one of the most well-rounded players to ever play the game. Uh, in today's guard-oriented league, I think he would completely thrive. Um, his range would most likely extend to the three-point line. I think he would shoot it pretty efficiently because he was a pretty efficient shooter. Um, I think there would be zero hesitation to have the ball in his hands at all times. As many other guards and forwards are used in a similar way, you know, my comparison for Oscar in today's game is like Luca, you know, a bit smaller, maybe, but faster and a better defender. You know, that might sound like an insane comparison, but I truly do think that's how his game would project today. You know, it translates so, so well. Um, for that reason, Oscar's going to go in the S tier. I, I think he would be even better in the modern NBA. All right, next up, Wes Unseld. So, look. Much respect to Wes Unsell. Dude is indeed an NBA legend. Was by no means a bad player. I just don't think a guy averaging 13 points per game is going to translate to superstar in the modern era. Um, the way Wes played was unique in that, according to every source that I could find, he was great due to his intangibles. Uh, like the things that he did to make a difference included his screen setting, his presence, outlet passing, defense, making his teammates better. You know, I have no doubt that that would be a huge asset to any team in the modern NBA. Uh, I think he would truly help teams win, um, albeit playing a much lesser role. Um, 
you know, he went into a struggling Washington Bullets team and made that one of the best teams in the league year after year. Uh, Unsettled today's game would likely have an acceptable mid-range shot because he did. Uh, it's possible that it, it could even, you know, stretch to sporadic threes here or there. Uh, his jumper wasn't bad for a big of that era. And it's not totally impossible that, it, that he could stretch that shot out. You know, he was a good finisher around the rim and a great defender. I could foresee him looking like some combination of some of the better power forward role players of all time. Kind of like Draymond Green, like Dennis Rodman. Um, maybe making the All-Star game as part of a key cog in a high-powered super team. Like both those players I use as an example. Kind of like what I said earlier about Bill Russell. Um, I just don't foresee him being considered by many as a superstar. However... Like like he was back in the day, you know, as, as his game doesn't translate all that well, you know, for, for that reason, I'm going to say he fits in the C tier. And then finally for today's video, the MVP of 1970, Willis Reed. So, Reed was a pretty prototypical 60s, 70s big man with a bit of a jumper, uh, would translate as such. Um, he was quite good, especially defensively, was a strong rebounder. Kareem is noted as saying he's one of the guys that defended him the hardest because of his length and his power in the post. He was really solid around the rim with a variety of cuts, post moves that freed up shots for him at the time. All that being said, he translates just about as well as any old-fashioned big is going to. A lot of his game has been aged out. I think he fits better than, say, Willis... Or, I'm sorry, he is Willis. Fits better than, say, Wes Unseld because he was more talented offensively and had a slight, had slightly better size and mobility. I think the proper comparison to Willis Reed today's game would be kind of like an Evan Mobley type player, maybe a bit stronger, um, but less good on the ball. You know, not really a MVP level guy in today's league. I do think he fits in when it comes to play style. Um, that I think he would have. You know, I think he would be a bit of a stretch mobile guy, um, and a, and a solid enough defender that you don't want to challenge him on the inside. Um, with all that. I think he deserves a little bit more than C tier, uh, so I'm going to put him in B. He's somewhere in, in between the C and B tier. I, I, like, I think he translates a bit better than Russell and, and Unsell do, so he's going to go B tier for me. And so that will conclude this part of this tier list series I'm going to do. Like I said, this is going to be a, a series. Next up, I'm going to be touching on guys from the 70s, maybe a little bit of the 80s here in the next video. Um, yeah, I think this would probably be maybe a four or five part video series. Um, but yeah, you know, I'm going to enjoy talking about these. I, I like talking about these types of things. I think it's an interesting concept. Um, I think there's a lot that we can go with here, you know. Um, it's interesting to learn about a lot of these guys, especially some of the MVPs from the 70s, for example, who don't necessarily get talked about, or guys like Pettit and Kuzi, who people kind of forget about. Um, but it's enjoyable to talk about this, you know. Um, so with all that being said, uh, this will conclude this first part of this video series. You know, I'm glad you guys decided to stick around for this one. Uh, if you're interested in continuing to watch some of the videos from the series that are be coming out, uh, go ahead and subscribe. Give this video a like. Uh, share the video if you'd like. Uh, I would appreciate it, you know, so hope you enjoyed.